before I'm going to begin, uh, I should uh, tell you that if you, are want, if you want to vote for Joskas, it's, uh, you have to do it now before my uh, keynote is to, to end, because, uh, yeah, there is Ste St Stefan there, and he can collect your votes. So if you didn't vote for Joskas, it's actually last minute fault. Okay. Um, my name is Radek Suski, and if you don't know me, um, on a daily basis I am a software developer. I am involved in the Joomla project in, yeah, actually since the beginning uh, in many areas. Uh, currently I am the events team leader, and I think I'm really proud of is uh, I was the initiator of the Joomla events traveler program. Maybe you don't know it, but some of you are here just because of this program, and I'm really proud of it. Thank you. Uh, so thank you to Rowan because she is taking over and she is doing a really a great job uh, with the Joomla event trailer program. Thanks, Rowan. When I compare myself to other community members, Joomla community members, I see mainly two two differences. The first thing is I actually don't have a cat. And the second thing is, uh, I actually do have a personal life. I'm just kidding, of course, I know that many of you have a personal life. And, but when I look at these people, sometimes in, they involved in Joomla, then I have to sometimes wonder why, when, when they, those people are even going to sleep. Because I know every of you have a, a regular work and family and so on. And you are spending so much time for this Joomla project. I would really like to thank you all for this uh, involvement. So thank you, Joomla. <laughs> and because I have a personal life, I have also hobbies. And my first hobby is um, I like bicycling. And yeah, and if you like bicycling too, we have a team. You can go to the jcycle.org website. And we are actually Bicycling for a good cause, we are collecting money for cancer. We have a, sp a sponsor who is uh, giving us uh, one euro cent per uh, kilometer. We did uh, this year about 30,000 kilometers already. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are really a crazy person, there is also a team called J Run Team. Yeah, <laughs> Carlos. So if you like to run, like marathon and so on, go to, I don't know if this website is already online, the J-Run. It's online yet. It's online yet? Oh, oh, offline. OK, so yeah, you can go to, to Carlos and talk to him and join the team. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. And uh, my second hobby is um, I am a beekeeper. I took this picture of my wife actually in the whole protection suite because uh, so that you can recognize what I am doing and what we are doing, because actually the way we are working with bees are more or less like this. So without any protections, with because bees are actually very peaceful uh, animals. Uh, now, I, I actually don't like sweet things, and I don't really like honey as well. So you could ask why, why I'm doing it. So the, the reason is very simple. A few years ago, uh, about two years ago, I saw at Facebook a post from Greenpeace International that bees are dying. And then I, yeah, I followed those links and I uh, read a li little bit about it and f I learned that this is a really big issue. Bees are dying worldwide. And now some of you may think, uh, you mean the small yellow black uh, annoying insect that keep ruining my picnic, right? Why do I care? If you think about it, they actually you are thinking about wasp and not about bee. <laughs> um, now the picture is funny, but truth be told, uh, wasp is actually a very useful uh, animal as well. Just uh, yeah, a little bit annoying. Okay, but you still may think, okay, they are going to die, but why I actually should care? So here's why. The bee is responsible for pollinating one third of our entire food. So without bees, those, this food is going to disappear as well. 
And I found once uh, a quote of Albert Einstein, who's supposed to say that if bees are going to die, the human society is going to follow very soon. But to be honest, I also found this quote. <laughs> and if you ever heard that Einstein said it, so Einstein actually never said it. <laughs> but people like, like to uh, quote Einstein for some reason, so yeah. Um, Okay, but still, at least one third of our food is going to disappear if bee is going to extinct. And this is even worse. This is the food we are going to, we are going to lose, actually the most tasty food at all. Without bees, we are not going to have potatoes. Uh, we are not going to have oranges. We are not going to have uh, strawberries, cherries, cucumber, watermelon, um, onion, not entirely sure about it, <laughs> I, I knew it, but probably as well asparagus. And what is really, really bad for us, this plant is going to disappear. Does anyone know what plant is it? Are you honest? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same plant. Any, any clue about it? Coffee. Yeah. So this is the really bad, bad news for especially developers among us. Without peace, we are not going to have a coffee. <laughs> and because actually uh, bees are also responsible for pollinating the food we are feeding our livestock with, it would be really difficult to have a, yeah, meat. So I think we all now can see that this is really a serious issue. Let's try and find why actually bees are dying. When I, uh, when I say bee, most of, of you are thinking about a honeybee. Um, there are two reasons why bees are dying and three reasons why honeybees are dying. He's, by the way, my queen. Um, a small quiz, does any, anyone know who is the boss in a beehive? Who is managing a beehive? Who? The queen, right? It's not. A, a bee colony is actually a very democratic construct. It's very comparable to Joomla community. Um, we have a bee, uh, in, in beehive you have, a, we have a different bee groups responsible for different tasks, like example for p c collecting honey and paws, for building combs and for feeding the queen and for, uh, yeah, uh, uh, for, for, um, uh, taking care of the of the of the bee hole of the bee entry, and they are kind of uh, yeah kind of working teams, working groups, and they are doing the fully democratic. Even if they are going to uh, to swarm, which is a natural process, how bee are, is is procreating. There, there, so there are bees which are flying around and searching for a new, new uh, place, for new bee colony, and they are coming back and, and telling the other bees what they found, and they are deciding all together if they are going to fly there or to search for another, um, for another uh, place. As I said, bee, uh, a bee colony is very similar to, to a Joomla community, actually. However, there are two main differences. The first difference is that a beehive works actually perfect. And the second thing is this beehive is actually mainly managed by females. Um, there are as ma males as well, but as males in beehive are actually only for procreating and for, yeah, for good mood of females. Doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> So at the end of the season, short before winter, those drones, those drones, males are going to kick out of the, of, of the beehive because they are just useless. So I don't know if there's any correlation between those two facts, that beehive is uh, uh, absolutely perfect construct and that beehive is going to be managed by females, but I think we could actually have a more females in our Joomla community, right? So, as I said before, when we are talking about bee, we are probably thinking about the honeybee. When, if you are a native English speaker, you may also think about bumblebee. I found in no other language this insect uh, names indicate that this is actually a bee. 
only in, in English. Ma maybe it's more languages, but all the languages I know, it's, it doesn't indicate that this is a bee. But there are much more bees. There are so-called solitary bees that are living alone um, in, the, in the soil or in wood, or in trees, and so on. So what the reason why a honeybee is dying? The main problem we have in Europe is so-called varroa destructor. This is the brown insect on the bee, which doesn't belong usually there. Um, this mite is imported to us from Asia, and the Asiatic bee is actually able to fight this, but the European bee isn't. isn't. So the, that's the reason why they are dying, one of the reasons. This mite is uh, very similar to to a tick, but that if we would have a tick that big as a bee have a varroa uh, mite, it would be probably like about 50 uh, centimeters in diameters. There is a way a beekeeper can fight those mites, but this is not, not really very pleasant for the bee. Uh, frankly, it also shows clear that a honeybee wouldn't be able to survive without human today. But the biggest problem is actually pesticides. I found this uh, infographic one in the in internet, and there's a very uh, interesting sentence to, about it. Um, this uh, special ne neonicotides, sorry for my, uh, for my spelling, neonicotides um, are really uh, dangerous pesticides for the, for the bee, and not for only for the bee, for the human, for human as well. So the author of this infographic said that it's linked as contributors to honeybee colony decline. However, this is still inconclusive and subject to continued research and conflicting interpretation. And I, I agree with him. And the problem is every time an independent researcher pr proves that this pesticide is really very dangerous, the agri-business is uh, founding another research which proves otherwise. And that really problematic thing for us is that governments keep listening uh, mainly to those uh, researchers sponsored by agribusiness. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of money. That pesticides are really very dangerous for us, we can see clearly in China, where there are areas in China that are actually poisoned completely with uh, pesticide. And the Chinese people found solution for that. They are actually pollinating flowers by themselves, manually. <laughs> of course, it's a joke. You have to consider that one bee is able to pollinate about 400 flowers every single day. And about 10,000 bees are flying around from one beehive and pollinating flowers. So a bee colony can pollinate about 40 million flowers a day. And this is no a human could actually do, especially not in Europe or United States or West, uh, West uh, countries. Because I care about bees, I found that the society in Germany is actually pretty unaware about the problems with pesticides, until something really terrible has been discovered. They found tra traces of glyphosate, this is one of the, uh, uh, of the pesticides, in beer in Germany, in beer. It's really terrible news for, be for German people. This is especially funny because I can assure you that you can find traces of glyphosate in actually any kind of food, and not only in Germany, in the entire world. But this was shocking information for German people. And I'm actually pretty happy about it. The second big problem is so-called monocultures. Monocultures are huge areas where only one type of plant is being planted. Even if this plant is useful for the bee, it will bloom only in a particular per per period of time. After this, bloom, this, this flower is stopped to blooming, the bees had nothing more to eat. And even worse, you have to consider a, blue, a, a bee is like a, like a human as well, as, as, as every, every single uh, living being. It can, can ju it just can't use only one type of food, because only one type of food contains some minerals, some vitamins, but not all we need. Yeah. 
especially exemplary in the USA when hundreds of square miles are uh, planted with, for example, almonds. Um, everything else in this area is being considered as useless. So they are getting rid of it. It's being destroyed, of course, with pesticides. So there is no way a bee could actually survive in such an env environment. But they, of course, need bees because they want to have almonds. So they are hiring as so-called professional uh, beekeeping companies, and those beekeeping companies are transporting thousands of beehives from one, one place to another, just for the moment where this particular plant is uh, blooming. And this is not really very healthy for the bee as well. So what can we actually do about it? How can we help bees to survive? You can, of course, become a beekeeper, but uh, to be honest, it's a responsible task, and yeah, you will get stink, stung uh, as well many times, for sure. It's a little bit painful sometimes. What can we do is actually very simple. Plant flowers. Most of the flowers of the, for the humanity, useful flowers, are blooming only um, in particular period of time, especially at the beginning uh, on, of the spring and at the beginning of the summer. But after that, we have no plants that we consider as, uh, as useful for us. So what, what you can do is just pl plant flowers like this. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? And there are a few, um, few different flowers and plants you can plant. You can plant your flowers if you have a garden, backyard, or you can even, if you are living in, in an urban area, you can go just to, to your local park and plant some flowers there. And this is very, very helpful for bees. Uh, my final thought is, um, in today's world, we have enough food to feed actually every single person on this planet. Yet still, about 20,000 people are starving to death every single day. Now consider what will happen if we are going to lose one third of our, of our food. Thank you very much.